Uh, this is Owen Jeffcott interviewing Ryan Beswick, Tamworth FC player and former Eaton Borough player. Uh, so Ryan, talk me through your career so far. You started out as a youngster at MK Dons, I believe, and then Leicester snapped you up for their youth setup. How did that feel yeah. as an up and coming footballer? Uh, yeah, it was brilliant. To be fair, it was something that um, I think we needed to happen. Uh, I needed to move away from home, really. Um, home's London, so MK Dons was sort of a new team that had been created from the old Wimbledon. I didn't like it there, didn't really like anyone there. So it was, uh, yeah, nice. No, so I, was, I was good as a 15 year old, so quite a few offers, and Leicester seemed to suit the best at the time. All right, so we've also got as well that you've uh, been at Solly or Moors as well, and uh, you play with quite a few former Burham players there as well. Yeah, yeah, we had, uh, well, had a good few years there, played quite a few games, and played with some really good players, yeah, but a few ex non Eatons that. Joined, I think they all joined at the same time actually from from Nuneaton. Nuneaton got relegated, I think, if I can remember rightly. And that's oh, Gav Cowan, Theo Street, Connor Franklin, Adam Walker, they all came and joined us, which was, uh, yeah, it was a big boost for us. And talking of Solio, that championship winning season must have been good. How was it the, few, the seasons leading up to it, and could you see it coming? Um. To be honest, not winning it, no. Uh, I knew we'd have enough. We'd compete at the top with the additions we had to the squad we had already. But I think the season before, we were top at Christmas and then we fell apart and ended up missing out on the playoffs uh, completely, which was a bit bit of a shock, really, when you were top at Christmas to fall that, off, to fall that far off. But we, uh, yeah, we bounced straight back and we were... We looked good in pre-season, there was a good feel about the place, but I don't think anyone knew that we'd win it with such ease as what we did in the end with some big teams in there and at the time, which was, uh, yeah, it was nice to win. Uh, your time at Nuneaton wasn't uh, wasn't really what I think you or the club, club mm. probably wanted. Uh, <laughs> no, from, not at all, no. Yeah, from your view, what was uh, your time at Nuneaton like? Uh, well, I thought it was going to be brilliant. I was obviously... I knew Tommy Wright from Leicester days and I knew Lee Thorne from Kettering. So that's the, the only reason I really left Solil to go there. And it was closer to home and whatnot. And, and yeah, it looked like a good chance to do something with the club. It, it should have been moving back in the right direction. And also everyone thinks quite well publicised the off-field problems that happened and the not getting paid and club falling further and further into debt and yeah it was a shame really because it we had a good squad of players and we had a good group and even at the time against all the adversity that was happening and uh, the not being paid and we, we, we still ended up having a right good charge at the playoffs and why um while Dino Marmory was there he really turned us round and took us into a force that nobody really wanted to play against and uh, yeah, it's a shame when he left. It he was sort of holding the club together. He was a he was a good guy and doing everything he can to build a good team on the pitch. And unfortunately, with what was happening off the pitch, it left uh, left him in uh, a difficult position where he didn't really want to go, but he had to. Yeah, I think looking back, I think Dino is probably one of the better managers that we've had uh, in my time yeah. watching. Yeah, definitely. He was unreal. Really good for the lads. He was did everything right. Really professional. Did um, made us a really hard working team. Really hard to beat team. And yeah, we not many teams took points with us when Dino came in. And uh, yeah, it was a good time at the club. Actually, to be fair, it was it was hard. He made us work hard, but. It was uh, yeah, it was really good for the club, but unfortunately, the club itself couldn't sustain it and keep everyone there. Uh, so moving to present day, you seem to have settled down and having another great season with Tamworth, and you've, they've got you scoring quite a few goals. Have you got an inner goal scorer? Out, have they got an inner goal scorer out of you? Um, well, to be fair, I used to I used to score quite a bit in the solo days when I was a winger or played in the ten and. It's uh, yeah, nice to get a goal, but it's not my 
main concern when I turn up to a game. I think about winning and we, we've got a good group here. It's really enjoyable. We've, we've got good staff, we've got good players, we've got a good thing going and hopefully it can continue. And At the minute, it's looking quite good. Obviously, a disappointing result on the weekend, but yeah, we're all, we're all heading in the right direction, I think. And uh, so you've passed 10 goals as well this season. Is there a target that you're hoping to achieve now? Uh, no, I don't really. I've never, and even when I was a goal squad, I really set targets. It would be nice to get to 20, I think, on five or six away from that, but I'm not going to uh, get above my station to start thinking thinking that far ahead. I'd prefer the uh, strikers to get all the goals and us get promoted, and I'll just stay in the middle doing my job. But <laughs> if I need to score, I'll, I'll do my best to score. If we, but at the end of the day, it's three points to get a promotion that all that worries me. And uh, what was your reason for actually getting into football? Uh, well, my dad played. He had a he had a promising career, but it got cut short by a really bad leg break and a few other things to his leg, and he got cut short. So I think it was sort of in the blood that I was I was always going to play football. And I think from the age of four, I uh, first turned turned up to a Saturday morning session or whatever they are and uh, yeah I was just always into it I was got into Wimbledon Academy I think when I was about six but they only had an under nine team so I was playing under nines or under eights I think it was when I was six and just yeah stayed involved in it for, for the whole life and uh, moving away from football what do you like to do outside uh, I love golf play a lot of golf which is uh, I think a lot of footballers are keen golfers but um, apart from work, my son and my girlfriend and the dogs, it's a um, tough balance to fit it all in. But now there's not much time for golf anymore. But it's uh, it is a, um, a hobby that I like to do. <laughs> and uh, lastly, I hear you're a Chelsea fan. What are your thoughts on the young lads this season? And should they be given a chance? Of should Frank spend? Uh, yes, I. <laughs> It was a weird one at the start of the season that I was never expecting us to um, be anywhere near the top four. I would, have, I would have taken top eight, I think, at the start of the season. But they've done they've done a lot better than I, I expected. And long may it continue. And hopefully we spend well and back up the young lads. I think a few of them are uh, yeah really good talents that will probably stick around in the. Chelsea line up for a few years and uh, finally who would you rather have in your side Eden Hazard or Frank Lampard <sighs> Hazard Hazard fan I think on his day you, you can't you can't touch him he, he's got everything in he and uh, that's why he got his big money move to Real Madrid and one of the reasons why I thought we'd struggle so bad was last year he seemed to be the only one that would win us a game so when we lost him I was Really thinking the worst, but we've done all right about him. But he'd be brilliant down the lamp. <laughs> all right. Thank you for your time, Ryan, and good luck for the rest of the season. Cheers, mate. I'll speak to you. Nice to speak to you too. Bye. S see ya.